<laughs> yeah. Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're learning Maseches Nazir Daf Chav Zayin. And we're starting on Chavavah Mubez, about eight lines, seven lines from the bottom, with the words Amar Le Rav Simi Barashi. Uh, we're going to be stopping on the top of Kav Ches and uh, just with fair note that um, we'll be ending in the middle of a brisa. It will be, it'll be incomplete until tomorrow, uh, and that is just the way the pages break up today. Now, we've been discussing at length this concept of Halacha Lamosh Sinai, that if a person was a Nazir, and they died, and they had an obligation to pay these korbanos, and they had ma'os stumen, they had unspecified funds. So the halacha lemosh misina was mechadesh, that even though one of the korbanos of the three was a chatas, which cannot generally be given binadava, a korban chatas is triggered by an aver bishoge. A korban chatas could never be, a person says, hare alai chatas, that's not... That that's not how things work. You can say that by an olan by a shlamim. Those are divrei nadava. But when you have maos tumin, when the money of the bal nazir after he dies is unspecified, there's a chiddush in halacha lemosh misina, a chiddush in halacha, and the chiddush is that it's yipul nadava. And we've been speaking at uh, at length about how this works, what the mechanics are exactly, all the shitas. And here we're going to be continuing this conversation because on Shabbos when we last left off yesterday, we were discussing whether or not other things were of the same kind of stumen. We know that by money, that there's this idea of stumen, that there's a, something called unspecified. And if you'll recall, we dis- we debated whether or not an animal with a mum was considered to be specified or unspecified. So we also saw what about nascha, what about money? That was a mach- uh, about uh, metal. A precious metal, silver, whatever that to machlok at somewhere. So there's like a whole discussion here. So seven lines from the bottom of the Gemara, picking up right there. The Gemara says, "I'm of Simi Bar Ashi the Rab Papa Ma'ita and Ma'hu the Rabbanon." What are all of these rabbis talking about? And the Gemara says the punchline is like this: The Amre they they are of the opinion that Maos only money can be uh, unspecified, but v'lo behema v'lo nascha. They hold that only money can be uh, stam, but if you have animals. Or if you have uh, if you have bars of metal, those things are not part of the unspecified category. We're only talking about money. Why is that? Because money in a large amount, let's say a bag of many coins, is by its nature unspecified. We don't know which coins are going where. There's no clear lines of demarcation. But by bars, it could be a very small number of bars. It's not like coins. So there's therefore, we assume that it's only most and not animals and not bars of, of metal. And most as well, we assume that the nature of that which is unspecified would be money, velo savra, not boards, as we briefly spoke about yesterday. So says the Gemara, hold on one second. You want to say that only money is uh, that which can be applied to the halacha lemosh misinai, that it's yiplu l'nadava, that's not true. El if that's true, we should have also said ma'os velo ofos. We should have said that it's true by money to exclude birds. But that doesn't seem to be the case in the following statement, because v'chitei ma'achanami, if you want to say that it's true that birds are not to be assumed to be stam, that's not true. El ahad amar of chizda, ein hakinin misparshos, kinin on their own, they're not considered to be misparshos. In other words, they're considered to be stam. Only in a case where there are purchasers of those birds, or there is a kohen who has to decide when kin and when a pair of birds are given, which one's the chatas, which one's the ola. But the general assumption of birds is that they're stam. So here we see a conflict because the Gemara's initial present- presentation of Maita Maudir Abanan is that only money can be considered to be unspecified. But any other objects can't be unspecified, yet we see that ofos, seemingly, are unspecified. So now we have two things instead of one. We thought it was only money that could be unspecified, and now we have birds. And says the Gemara, Amai, why would that be? Hamos Kabirla. The halacha lamosh misinai is only by money. It shouldn't be by ofos. So what then is the din of Rechizda, where he seems to say that the baseline of the kinan is that they are not misparsho, said in fa- that in fact they're stumen. So Amar Le, remember who's talking here, the dialogue was between uh, Rav Simi Bar Ashi Rav Papa. So he says back to him, Amar Le, according to your rationale, then I don't understand the following Mishnah, top of Chavzayin Amar Aleph. There's a reason why the Baalei Atos was here are very lengthy. Um, and we don't have, I, I haven't learned all of these Tos was in, but we don't have time to even, uh, even begin some of these discussions, as we'll see on the top of the next page. There is a very, very difficult girso, girsa changes in the Gemara. This Gemara is torn apart. And there are many different girsos. 
the girsos that are on the page that we see here is one version, and um, Rabbi Resnick quoted is still a different version, many verses added to the Gemara. So there's a lot going on beneath the surface here. So we're, of course, it's a daf shir, we don't have time to dig in. Um, but uh, the, on, on the most basic level, the Gemara has a problem in the following. According to your rationale, we should have a problem with the following Mishnah. Hadetnan, what does the Mishnah teach us? This is a Mishnah that's found later on in this Masech Daf Memhe. Rashbag Omer, Hevi Shalosh Behema Velo Piresh, Shalosh Behemos Velo Piresh. Let's say that a person brings three Behemos and he does not specify them. Haru'uya Lechatas Tikarev Chatas, that the animal that's fit to be a Chatas, we know that a Chatas has to be a female animal. So there the animal has to be a female and then it will be brought as a Chatas, even though there was no specifications. The animals were just left over. Nobody said boo. Here are three animals. They were not left over. They were really stumped. And the Ola Tikrav Ola, because the Ola is always a male. And the Shlamim Tikrav Shlamim, because the Shlamim is always an ayal, is always a ram. So they were able to figure out which animals belong where. And says the Gemara, Amai Ha'amres Behem Alav Kimifureshes Tamiyo. According to you, according to you who's arguing that most, not only are most stam, but even Ophos are stam. So says the Gemara here, Amai, why would this be the case over here that we would decide where these animal go, animals go? According to you, that chickens, ophos, are not considered to be mefureshes and that they're stam. The same should be true by, by animals. So he says back to him, no. Omar le hasam, by the case of the kinin that we started with on the bottom of Chavav base, that case was different. There, the only reason why we were able ever, ever able to specify which animal is which was because the Pasuk says, In general, it's time we would not know how to attribute the animals, but the Torah gave a power to the Kichas Bailim and gave a power to the Kohen, that he can determine which animal is a Chatas and which, animals are, uh, and which animal is an Ola. So when it comes to the birds, uh, it still may be possible that Ophos are stam. It's just that we have Xeris Akasuv to tell us otherwise. But the standing assumption is that Ophos should be should be unspecified. However, Hacha, and we take out the word Nami over here, Hacha over here in this Mishnah of Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, turning to the top of Chav Zayin, Amud Beis, Mimotis Amris, Hadein Dechatas Tikrav Ola. See here, the three animals that he dedicated, it's like having, it's like playing Tetris. There are three pieces. And there's three open spots, and each piece fits in one spot perfectly. One is one square, one is a zigzag, and one is a square, whatever it is. So here we have the same thing. He says, Me must amris hadain dechatas tikrav ola, the female animal that can't be brought as an ola. An ola is always a male. Hacha nekeva, hacha zachar. One is a chatas that's going to be female, one is a, an ola that's going to be male. He says, that doesn't require uh, being the furash. I can look at the animals and tell you this animal is a female, it has to be the chatas. It's obvious that that's, that that's the case. So while the Gemara doesn't really the what the only one that's female in in the, from the Naziris korban the korbanos yes oh. yeah there are other times in in halacha that korbanos are brought that are female but within the mix of a nazir you have female male male it's going to be a female for the chatas it's going to be a male for the ola and it's going to be an ayal it's going to be a ram for the shlamim. So says the Gemara, this is the Gemara's response, by the Ophos, I could explain myself away. But in the case of Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, that's not a question. Over there, there were only, there's only one way, there's only one permutation that could have ever been intended with one female and two males. Just, it has to be, so that's not, a, you can't learn anything from that case. And therefore the question stands, we don't conclude here. The question stands, we don't know if only Ma'os is where we would apply the halacha of Moshe Sinai, that Ma'os or even if it were to be Ophos that were set aside, we don't know the answer to the question. And on the top of Chav Zayin, Amid on the second line, um, and uh, this next sugi is about 15 lines, and it should take us about five hours to properly learn, because again, the Girsos are very, very difficult, very hard to read this Gemara straight through. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll add in, I'll tell you where we're going to cut and paste. I have some parentheses here and some notes to the sides of the Hagos Habach. So let's, uh, wait, we first have to get there. So the Gemara says as follows, Masi Rav Hamnuna, this is another question based on what we learned on Shabbos. We had said on Shabbos that uh, uh, an animal that's a balmum can be treated like unspecified animals. Why? Because the animal can't be brought to Hakrava. It's a balmum. So if I bring three animals, that's like, as someone said after a shir yesterday, that's like setting aside collateral to say, I'm just setting aside these things which have monetary value 
and I'll switch them out for kosher animals later. But right now, their their equivalent is cash. That's effectively how we look at it. It says the Gemara, <laughs> Would we really be of the opinion that an animal that's a balmum, an animal that's blemished, is treated like an unspecified type of entity like money would be? After all, Tashma, or according to some Girsos, Vihatanya, and we have this Brisa, which is found later on on Daf Lama, just a couple blot away. Ketzad Amru Haish Megalech on the Zirus Aviv. What is a scenario where a man would be able to get a haircut after his Nazirus, after his father brings his Korbanos? Says the Gemara, and please follow along carefully because there's a lot of changes here. Bizman Shehaya, here's the first change. Bizman Shehaya. Aviv Nazir, skip those next three words. But at a time when a person's father was a Nazir, last line, last word on the line, Vihifrish Aviv Maos Nazirus Vimes, and the father separated money, stam, for his korbanos, and he died. The Omar and the son said, Hareni Nazir al Manasha Galech al Maos Abba. And he says, I am going to get a haircut based on this allocation of money from a father. Then we have another gears to change. This is found in the Hagos Habach. This person cannot get a haircut based on the monies of the father. And then the Gemara continues straight through. If in fact all of the monies were purely stam, then yiplu lenadava, then all of that money, this is the halacha lamosh misinai, that's going to be lenadava. If he set aside animals, and this really is the part of the brisa that we need for our purposes, let's remember our question. We're trying to figure out whether or not an animal that's a blemish is considered to be an unspecified separation or a specified separation. So here, if hayasalo behema mufreshes or mifureshes, according to some commentaries, chatas tamus, the chatas has to be set aside because because the din in the Gemara is based on the halach mm-hmm. l'moshmi sinai, that the baal of the chatas who dies, his animal is tamus, and ola tikrav ola, ushlamim yikrav ushlamim. So based on weaving together what we've learned over the last many days, if there's money that's set aside stam, yiplu linadava. If the money is mefureshes, if, the, if there's an animal there that's set aside, so then the Gemara says chatas tamus. We don't apply the rules of mefureshes, and says the Gemara, my lava filu bailas mum. Can we see from here that maybe even an animal that has a mum is what we're talking about over here? In this last part of the of this um, of this brisa, the Gemara recommended that maybe we have a case where the animals that were set aside were baalei mum. And what do we see in the brisa? Chatas tamus. We see that we don't apply the rules of yiplu linadaba, which means that the animals are considered to be mefurashos, which means that you can't say that an animal that's a baal mum is tam. That's the Gemara's kasha. The Gemara says, "Lo, it's not correct. Really, Tamima, really, this Bryce is only talking about animals that are shleimim, that are not baalimum. They're perfectly fine animals. Would you really say that a baalimum is like a stam? If that's true, that a baalimum is considered to be stam, why did it only talk about mos? It should have said mos and baalimum. Why did it not talk about the Balmum? Says the Gemara. Lema, what we should have said is, that should have been it should have been uh, very clear. We should have spoken about a case of Mos. We also should have spoken about a case of Baalas Mum, and we didn't. So therefore, what do we do with this d- difficulty of understanding the Baal Mum? Says the Gemara, Hachanami, you're right that a Baal Mum is the same thing as Mos, and that a Baal Mum is Stam. We do assume that if money was set aside Stam, or if a collateral of animals that are Psulim, they have Mum and are set, set aside, they're no different than money, because Baalas Mum, the Mai Kedisha, what have you sanctified by separating out these animals that cannot be brought by Hakrava? Ledami. They're set aside for their finances. And that says the Gemara, Demei Hainu Mos. The financial equivalent of these three animals that are Baalim Mum, they are, they are only as good as their financial value. So let's say you have two pens in your backyard. One pen is animals that are, that are perfect. They're Tmimin. The next pen is for the animals that all have blemishes. So you, everything else is earmarked. You can't use any of your, your good animals. So you say, I'm finishing my Nazirus. I'm going to go take three animals out of the pen. And then the Baal Nazir dies. What happens with these animals? So says the Gemara, they're really stum. They're really stumin. They're really unspecified. Ad kach, that the equivalent of that money can then be used for Yiplu Linadava, even though there's a chatas woven in there. So we see that the halacha of a maos 
or, of money or animals that are not eligible for hakrava are equal. They're basically considered money. And therefore, the halacha lamosh sinai, the halacha lamosh sinai that indicates that when there are unspecified funds, that even though there's a chatas woven in, it's yipul and adava, that applies by money. And it also ap applies by things like animals that are that are not kosher for hakrava because they are nothing more than their financial equivalent. And there will be other examples as well that we can come up with. Uh, I don't know. You've got to come up with your own things that don't look like the Gemara's examples of what is mafurash. There are other examples. And that's the answer to this question. We thought that maybe we were wrong about bailas mum or not. A baal, an animals that are baalei mum are equivalent halachically to money. And the same rule of the halacha lemosh misina would apply to both. We're going to start this brisa. We'll end at the three lines on the top, onto the top of Kafchas Medal. We'll stop in the middle of the brisa, and then we'll pick up again tomorrow night. So it says the Gemara Masiv Rava. Rava asks Akashia from a brisa. The pasuk says Korbano. If you have the pesukim on the side, please join me so that we have some context. The Gemara says Asher Nasi Yecheta. If one of the princes of a Shevet. If he does a sin, and he violates one of the halachos of the Torah that he should not do, it was a shogeg, and he's guilty. So someone told him he did a sin. He has to bring a seir. Uh, he has to bring a goat that is a zachar and it's tamim. So Rava, a little bit more than halfway down from this brisa, says, "What what does the word korbano mean?" The Brisa says, If I'm the Nasi and I do an Avera, I can only bring an animal that I own. I cannot bring an animal that my father owns. Says the Gemara, Yachol, you might have thought, I might have thought that maybe the only time it cannot, I cannot use my father's korbanos for my burdens is where I'm obligated to give a chatas, and the animals he has are either more severe or less severe than my chatas. I might have thought that only because it's they're not congruent. Aval maybe Yotze, maybe I could have fulfilled my obligation with a chatas as a nasi. The korban shefrish aviv min hakala al hakala, min hachamura al hachamura. Maybe if the animal that my father has in the pen are halachically equivalent to the korban I have to bring, havamina that maybe that would have been sufficient. Talmud Lomar, korbano, korbano. We actually have a second reference of the word korbano. And the pasuk on the side here speaks about a slightly different case. This is. Just a couple of psukim later, this is psukim chavzayin and kafches, and the pasuk reads on the side: "V'im nefesh achas techatav bishkaga me'am ha'aretz ba'asosa achas mitzvos Hashem asher lo se'asen ve'ashen." This is not talking about a nasi. It's talking about me and you, regular Jews. We do something wrong. The chulei and it has the word korbano again. So back in the Gemara, eight lines from the bottom: "Tamalom or korbano, korbano be korbano hu yotze ve'eno yotze be korbano shel aviv." Even if it's going to be that my animal that I need to bring is halachically the one that my father has their equivalent, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I am not allowed to utilize my father's korbanos for my chatos. Yochel says the Gemara, lo yetze the korban aviv bebehema shehifrish, afilu min hakala la kala, min hachamura la hachamura. I might have also thought that if my father were to have separated out a behema, even though it's the same one that I could not use it, sharei eina de megalech al behemas aviv beneziros, just like as we saw earlier on the top of the page, that I'm not allowed to shave my hair beneziros based on my father's fulfillment of obligations with his korbanos by neziros. Aval, I might have thought, yotze bemaos shehifrish aviv afilu min hachamura la kala o min hakala la hachamura. Maybe, maybe if my father would have separated funds, I could go into my father's bank account, take his credit card, and use those earmarked funds for what I need. I can use my father's money to shave for the money for his years, just not for animals. And when is that? That's only when they're some, only when the money's unspecified, but not when they're mefurash. So Talmud Lomar, that I'm not allowed to use my father's money for my chatas. How do we know? Because there's a third korbano in the Torah. And this pasuk is 
uh, still a few psukim later. And if you take a look at Vaikra Dalad Lamid Bezvim Kebes Yavi Korbano, this Pasuk speaks about this Lakatas Nikeva Simima Yaviana. This is a Pasuk that indicates that a khatas is a Nikeva. And the Gemara there says yet again, Korbano, be Korbano Hu Yotse, the Eno Yotse, be Korbano. I'm not allowed as a Nasi, I'm not allowed as a Yid to benefit from my father's Korbanos. We are still in the middle of a Brysa. Our question has not been formulated yet. We'll figure out what that question is tomorrow, starting three lines down from the top of Kavches and Aleph. Wishing you all a beautiful night. Okay, but somebody